back in our view as well. I managed to uh, rebalance the blade carefully on this fan. I balanced this blade as best as I could. So it's um, a lot less rattles now. I want to actually fill this little void up in that bolt. Just put a bit of super glue in there. And I'm not using it. Let it soak and the super glue will set and lock that in the place. So super glue works very well when machining and metal work to hold the, um, the arbor under your stock and stuff. So I'm going to need the same principle for this to hold this on. I didn't hear my voice there, the air in the microphone. Apologies for that. Good old Taiwanese made Veermaster from 1999. Monitor, picked that up. Um, someone was having a clean out. They put the leopard tiles on the local uh, baby clothes and cell phones pages on Facebook. So whenever there's stuff that they picked up, I go and have a look. It's a good thing I did because I picked up a barbecue frame. It's a nice stainless steel uh, doors on it. It's like a metal cabinet. So. I might use a toolbox thing out of this, so I will. So I got that, this, and a printer they got for parts. So yeah, it's barbecue things currently out there. I've washed it all down, the pest controlled it. And I use that and put a workbench on top of it. You convert that and reinforce it a little bit and make a little workbench out of it. Maybe put some strong wheels on it. So that'll make an ideal metal cabinet workbench for out here. Also scored this and some more cassette tapes. These are the um, same models actually that I had at the primary school. My primary school had several of these. Supplied by LA Walker, Hamilton. Minor 10 retrovision from Hamilton, not from Mildura, my local town, eh? Someone must have bought it the made in Malaysia. So it's not a Japanese one. I remember these types here. Yep, I took 10 batches. Yep, I don't know if the pull the apart and clean it, because I just tested it, it works fine, but the belts of the cassette player are gone. The belts have perished. As you can see, it's one of those cassette decks that uses a, um, a one tape behind the other one. This is really cool. Depending on the kind of cassette tape, this door may not open. In that case, press the door to open. This is really cool. I like this. I thought this was quite unique. Tape 2 is a recording I play and tape 1 is just play. You select which tape you want and it will play that tape. Really cool. So I'll pull this apart and give an observation. It's got nice big bassy speakers and they're loud and bassy. This switch is a bit intermittent. They're only that speaker work. I could have played with this a lot and that speaker came on. So I'm going to pull the speakers out and pop this big dent out to fix that. So there's a bit of work. It's going to line in too. Beautiful. Got a mixing mix. Everything a boom box could need. Pretty cheaply made, but electronically it's still pretty good. I think the um, electronics are still Japanese inside here. It's just assembled in Malaysia. So it was early 1990s, I think, 1993 or something, this model might have came out. I've got to recheck. So I'll get this uh, monitor out the way and I'll uh, free up some bench space so we can pop this open. Someone's already done the speaker wire that they're jobbing here. What have they done there? 10 watt nominal 5 watt 3 ohms. Yeah, they've changed these wires here, see? This side is untouched, so the wiring here is normal. They seem to be in parallel. We've got positive and negative, and an extra positive for this speaker. That's kind of interesting how they've wired that up, and that's definitely original. R, L, and we've got a common speaker ground is here. Positive and negative for that speaker. Negative is tapped off that speaker for this speaker. Why would they have cut this off though and changed the wiring? What have they done there? That's pretty much all I can see. It's been touched. Big audio I see there. Oh yeah, check this out. I remember in primary school. Oh yeah, there's love dating tapes. 
Things are very hungry for tapes. You can see that, look at this. Yep, she's eating a lot of tapes. Shockers. I remember this. If you don't clean these ones especially, these things bloody love eating tapes. I might restore this and just run it past the head, see what, what recordings on that. We've got a, uh, a normal tape and an older um, metal tape. That one might be a chrome tape, chrome oxide. So I'll have to dig out some screws. This one, this one, and this screw has to be replaced, but someone's broken that. I wonder what I've made these longer. Interesting. Yep, it's all untouched. It's all original. The circuit board doesn't look like it's all I can see it's been um, touched. Yep, that's it. It's been looked at in the past, but I think she's okay. I'm going to take this cassette mechanism out and uh, rebuild this. There's no belts on this whatsoever. Oh, yeah, that feels quite uh, gummy and sticky. Yeah. <laughs> And that feels kind of sticky. Oh, I found there was a symptom on it. The circuit cassette. Fire not work. And it cassette does not work. Radio does work. So I messed around with it and it's got one of those big wide, um, three millimeter wide flat belts like the side of the big boom box I've got has. So it's the older style belt on this cassette player mechanism and that belt's in good condition. The main drive though, it's all in good condition under there. I played around with this little idea. I messed around with this, flipped it like crazy. And both of all these turn when I press play and rewind and fast forward. Number two had trouble when it was playing. I need a pin shot of it, but this wasn't engaging. So I messed around with it while it was playing. Like that, and it works. It all works. So now I'm gonna give everything a blast with our contact cleaner. These, especially this one here, is a bit dirty. So, uh, it's these long screws too. I'm going to have to dig out from the screw box to replace all these screws now. All well, works quite well. So I'm going to run out some alcohol and clean this pinch on the head. So now that they're exposed, run alcohol all over that and clean that. Cap's a bit close to the bloody heat sink, but it's in good condition. It's all Toshiba chips, all made in Malaysia, so. But the caps are all Japanese, so it's, uh, yeah. Nice and basic. 10 watt maximum, that's pretty powerful for something like this. Big beefy transformer, too. Okay, well, I got everything cleaned up as best as I could. As you can see, there were some dirty heads. So where that tape went, rust left behind. I had a good look through this. So I think I know why they put these speaker wires on there. I've cut the originals off. They've uh, drilled two holes in the back here and a third hole to run some external speakers. Yeah, they've run external speakers on this at some point. What sort of chipset? Toshiba TA7838P, Japan. Quite a powerful one, that one. Yeah, at least probably the 10 watt per channel, that little uh, amplifier I see. Yeah, you can see what they've done there. They've uh, taken some plastic off to try and run some external speaker wires. Can only uh, replace the three bottom long screws. I have not got any real long screws to do these top four. This boom box might rattle. I've got to find some uh, replacement screws for it. They're quite long. I don't know if I've got any of them. So that's what they've done. They've uh, attempted to put external speakers on this. Anyway, it works brilliantly. Let's put this back together and give it a good clean. I've pushed a dent out too. Pulled a speaker out and put it out for, uh, pushed it through by hand. Let's do some cosmetics on this now. That's better. Anyway, let's pop it back together. Be careful here. Number two does, um, it's got some tape to this too. Some clear recorder ones. And this one from the UT Thousand, what women want. I won't play too much of this for that, because they're going to be obviously popular protected. Let's have a look. 
Sony Music. Yeah, don't get, Sony, don't get involved with them. They will kick your ass. So tape two, I've got to spin this by hand. But doing this works instead to get that. So I've got to keep my eye on that. This thing fails to um, engage because of this switch. And that's why I choose the tape. Let's play. That's the right way. Yeah, it's playing a lot. Yeah. Wait for the audio to come through. We've got a bit of work to do here. Bit ugly there. Playing quite nicely. But everything's been cleaned, so no more uh, sticky heads or anything. Kind of a blank ass tape. Ah, oh, you know what? It's on dubbing mode. Let's have a look at here. Probably got some dirty switches too. I know if the switches are dirty, the audio won't come through. There we go. Uh Got you deep in the heart. That's enough of that. That one works. Look carefully at this. Put that antenna down before I bend that. I'll fix that up and tighten that up. Yeah, it was in very good condition on this. I'll get my torch just to make sure it's spinning. I don't want to damage that tape. Skin. Both of them work really good. Place at the right speed and everything. All work quite nicely. Beautiful. Oh, that's kind of cool. One tape behind another, they get two tapes. That's a really cool feature. Have a bit of a thing there, but I've got to give it a good clean now. Cosmetic clean. But switches have actually improved. Didn't even put contact clean in them yet. Oh, those tapes where so you get lyrics and stuff in them. Yeah, I'll put this back together and uh, try a line input and try some bass tests on my phone and listen carefully if any rattles in the cabinet because of those screws are missing. I bet it's going to rattle a lot. So I'll get a line input cable and I'll uh, test the um, cabinet rattles and things. The VFD is coming through the audio and FM. <laughs> Volume that flat out. Not bad. Not bad at all. No rattles. Alright, I'll do one more quick check before I uh, clean this thing up. Let's put some NCS to it and play with the equalizer. So three songs I'm going to look at here. No copyright. NCS. Wait for some tests on on camera. The scale is uh, pretty good. This um, good tunes. Let's see what's play the latest one. Retro Vision over again. Just just came for Retro Vision. Let's play Retro Vision on the Retro Retro Vision supplied uh, boom box. Retro Vision was an um, electronics retailer back in the day. They closed in 2006, I think. It wasn't too long ago. Wait for that. Not my internet. Not bad. Internet's bad. Ah. The internet's fine and crap. Let's turn the bloody put the GSM on. Kind of weird. 
does have stereo, but the line in kind of works funny. I'm getting a subwoofer effect on this channel and not a normal uh, notes on this one. Weird. Could be this cable. I know this cable's kind of faulty too. Life channels. I've had problems with this cable in the past, in the car and everything, and it was always doing funny things. One channel was sometimes work, and it would just go to both channels, so it's just cable. I'm not necessarily going to blame this. Cheap Chinese lady cable from JV Hi-Fi. Pretty good, I'm happy with that. Yeah, it's clean now. Little tweeters, there's no tweeters too. They seem to work. Anyway, that's enough for the test. That's, uh, I'll commence clearing this up. That'll be enough for now. Thanks for watching. Oh, by the way, the model number. WQT3608. GY. That's the model number there. Quite like having handles on the top of it. I quite like it. Anyway, thanks for watching.